everybody, Christina here with One Creative Direction. A little bit of a different camera angle tonight. Um, so as promised, um, I've committed to a few people to um, showing um, how I do my um, paint skin jewelry and magnets, etc. So this is the first step of the process. So I usually prep before I start painting anything. And I have everything ready in the event that uh, my spin-off or my, my spillage, my extra you know, paint um, is worthy of dipping it, the, the uh, cabochons in. So I have all my cabochons here. I keep them all in a nice container. Um, and what I do prior to painting is I have these little stir sticks and they're really thin ones. Um, these are the kind of like the Dollar Tree ones. They're a little bit wider than a lot of people use to stir their paint. Um, so any size will work. Um, obviously the bigger the size, the, the bigger your tape's gonna be. So this is how I do this. And I, I typically use, these are the same two I use all the time. So I've been using them since I started on jewelry. Um, so I just take this and I take some painter's tape and I wouldn't recommend the green one, which is a, doesn't have as much stick power. Um, I think it's for like um, a few days on your walls and, and trim. And I take a, a little piece off, and obviously it's gonna dip, be different if you're using the bigger one. I just tear a little piece off, and I take it, and I hold it, and I wrap it around the end of the stick. And you want it fairly tight, all right? And then when you get it all the way around, you try not to like finger it a lot. I typically get it on there, so it's nice and tight on there so it doesn't drop off, see that? And I have a baker's rack and you can use anything you want, but I use my baker's rack for everything. I put my wet stuff on here. I put my stuff that needs coated on here. Um, and I have one shelf. I don't know if you can see all of my little tape things already ready. I have it, it's all the way across the front of here. I have these, these done. Um, sometimes I paint for a couple of hours. I do lots of coaster sets and stuff. And so you have different colors. Um, I try not to do too many of the same exact color. Um, that way, you know, people have something to choose from. So anyway, once you get it on here, then I basically just, and you can use anything, a tray, a cookie sheet, I mean, whatever works for you, really anything. And then I just set it on the edge of here and I just take the stick out. I don't know what's paint sticking on the edge of there. And I just leave it on the edge of there. And I'll show you that it works just as well on the big one. I'll do one of those real quick. Tear off a little bit bigger piece of tape. Stick it on the end, wrap it around. If anybody has like really big fingers, these might be a little bit easier. The smaller ones are a little challenging, but yeah, see, works just as good there. So that's how you want it. And then you would put it there. So I do all that prior to putting my gloves on for the simple fact that when I first started doing this, I don't know if you've tried like messing with tape when you have gloves on. It just, you're just constantly like pulling off of this finger, pulling off of this finger, you know, just, it's a struggle. So that's why I do all this prior to putting my gloves on and painting. So then when I get, you know, a coaster or whatever, and I have something I wanna, you know, dip a cabochon in, I simply come over here and I'll take one and you basically just take it and stick it just like that. Okay, so your flat edge is there and then you go over to your, and I use a, a spinner, you go over and you just dip it in the paint and I'll get to that point. When I get to that point, I will sh actually show that and I'll show you what it looks like on the back after I dip it because you can't really go by the back, you have to look at the front, which is why I like to use the skinnier sticks and the skinnier paint, that way you can see more of, you know, what's on the cabochon. Now, there's only been a couple of times that, like I, when I flipped it over, it didn't look like it was covered all the way on the surface. And I just got a paper towel and wiped it off and, and did it again. So it, it's kind of nice because if you don't like it or you didn't cover all the way, then you can redo it. So. Um, and then once I get the paint on it, I just take it over here and do the same exact thing. I set it down on my baker's tray 
and I just slide the stick out. And I'll bring the camera over here so we hopefully you can see that. And I'll do it again when it's wet, but you can see that it's flat and I leave them to dry like that overnight. If I have, you know, multiples that I want, then I come over here and I just slide my stick in the end of one of these and go grab another cabochon. So it's really that simple. Um, they literally dry overnight, um, less than 24 hours. I usually wait a day or so before I, I glue them on. But, but yeah, so um, that's that portion of it. And then once they are dry, you're going to want... You know, if you're doing magnets, of course you want the magnets. Um, but if you're doing jewelry, then you have these different uh, jewelry trays. I use round ones, I have some heart ones, etc. cetera. Um, and then you would just take your, your painted cabochon. And I use this. I don't know what everybody else is using, but I I really like this. I've never had any issues with it not sticking. Um, and you only need a tiny, tiny little drop. If I were doing this one inch cabochon, I would put a drop just in the very center of there. Because when you put that glass on there, it spreads the glue. And what you don't want to happen is that the glue comes over the edges of the tray um, then you, number one, you're going to get it all over your fingers and then you're going to get it all over everything else and it's not going to look very good. Um, because this is a diamond glaze, so it tends to like magnify and make the, the design more brilliant in, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, that's all you do is just glue it in there and it dries really, really fast. I let them dry and then I assemble the jewelry, whether it's a keychain or a necklace or etc. So that's that's all the detail I can share with you for right now. So when I start painting, I'll turn the camera back on and show you how I dip it and put it on my tray and that'll be a wrap for the video. So I'll see you in a few when I start painting. Okay, everybody, I wanted to come back and show you um, how to dip in the, the paint with the cabochon. So I'm gonna grab one of these real quick and I'm gonna use one of my thin ones and I'm gonna throw a smaller cabochon on here. Um, I think we're going to go with one of these square shaped ones. You can see it's nice and secure on there. All right. And I'm just going to take my, my stir stick and just kind of figure out where in the paint I want it to go. And you just kind of look at your design. Um, and I've had quite a few of my customers say that they like, you know, the black lacing portion. So I'm going to dip it in this section right here. And I'm just going to push it down in the paint. I'm going to make sure it's all covered and bring it back up. And you can see it's all covered. It doesn't look very pretty from that side, but from the other side, I don't know if you can see that. You can see the lacing. Uh, and I'll update the video once that's dry, but I wanted to just show you that real quick. And like I said, I just go ahead and take it over to my tray and I place it on my tray like this. And then I just make sure it's sticking to the tray, the back of it, and just pull my stick out. And then those will be dry tomorrow. They dry nice and flat over there and they'll be ready to go. So I will update it with a dry result and uh, thanks for coming by and, and hang out with me tonight and uh, hopefully I shared some, some tips that will help someone. Um, I know everybody does it a little bit different, um, but this is how I found that works really well. It makes it, the process a lot more faster um, for me and um, I'm all about faster. I, I'm not very patient and waiting for my skins to dry on my plastic sheeting for two weeks. Because sometimes it takes a really, really long time. And then you don't really have any control over how thick it is in places. So this to me is just a much better process and obviously faster. So once again, thank you for coming to watch. Catch you on the next video. Bye now.